Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is HUD, the Get Actors in Selection Rectangle node. Okay, we have a very large node here with a very long name, but it's pretty simple. Basically, we define a rectangle. So a starting X and Y and an ending X and Y. And then based on some filters and some options, are there any actors inside of it on our screen? Now this uses the HUD class so that way we can basically, it projects and deprojects and determines if anything's gonna be hit. It's really nice if for example, well not for example, but a common example would be something like a real-time strategy game where you could easily create a rectangle to select some units and then do whatever you'd like with them. Let's see a basic example. I'm using the draw rect node in combined with the get actors node so that way we can use it for testing. And I'm not creating a selection box, I'm just drawing a rectangle matching what my selection box is. And you notice I can move it around the screen here. Now by default it's going to be set up with no class filter. You're going to fill in your X and your Y for your first point, so the top left corner, and your X and your Y for your second point, or your bottom right corner. In my case, I'm defining that top left and the top right to give you this cube. And then we have a few options determining what does and does not work. But by default, if we set it up like this and we hit play, nothing's going to happen. Our filter is none by default, and this is things, the filter is what's filtering out what we can select, what will be returned in our output. So by default, nothing will show up. If we change this to actor, for example, and we hit play, we're gonna start seeing a large number. That number in the top left is how many actors are being outputted in our array. Now keep in mind, we have a lot of things in our scene. Our character is composed of a lot of different objects. We have this cube in front of us here. We have a background, we have some shadows, we have some text, we have things like that. Now UMG is on top. As you can see here, the UMG is on top of the HUD. So UMG will not count for this one. So keep that in mind. Let's make it more realistic. Let's say we wanted to actually just know our box. Now I have a HUD box. That is this box right here. So you'll notice as I move my rectangle over it, once it actually starts colliding and overlapping, I get a result of one. And the only result is going to be this box. As long as any point of that item is overlapping, we're going to get back a valid result. Now we have a few options here. Include non-colliding components. Basically these are things that are not colliding, that are part of our box that will basically trigger an overlap. So if we hit play and we have it turned on, you'll notice we have some things showing up. Things like our shadows and other objects are basically going to cause issues. You'll notice if I come over here, even though I'm not touching, it's still gonna trigger. And you'll notice it'll trigger from below and it'll trigger from the side. This one, for the most part, you're probably not gonna care much about. It's got special uses. For the most part, you'll wanna leave this unchecked. You want to primarily check against the collision component or collision volume you have set up. The second one, however, is important. This one is basically, does our box contain everything for this actor? For, for example, the collision components or the non-colliding if we have this checked. Basically, is this, an, this is an all or nothing checkbox. Let me show you what I mean. Before, remember, we could mouse over and it would trigger. Now it won't until the entire thing is enclosed. You'll notice here if I do something like this, or if even I make it even smaller, let's make it something like this. It's almost, but it's not quite. There's a little bit left. It's not until I'm enclosing the entire thing with my box, I'm enclosing the entire thing with this rectangle I'm drawing, that will actually trigger. Now our output's pretty simple. It's just an array of actors. All I'm doing is printing out our length. That's why we see one when I cover this. And you can, of course, iterate over you this array however you want and get back your results. So that is something to keep in mind, and that is how our Get Actors in Selection Rectangle works. We basically make sure you fill in the class you want to look for. You're starting top left. You're finishing bottom right. This is if you want everything, including the non-colliding components. So 
Even if you had something non-colliding like a text or a billboard or something else, it would be this. And this is the actor must be fully enclosed in this rectangle to count. By default, as long as you start selecting it with the item, it'll trigger. And if you turn this on, the entire thing must be selected. So that's it. That's going to wrap up our Get Actors in Selection Rectangle box. It's useful, for example, duplicating like an RTS selection, or maybe you want the player the ability to easily select things or grab things, or in my case, I simply had a box I can use for selecting. Maybe you want this as a stamp. This is a tool where you're digging, you click on it, and it's going to go ahead and react to anything underneath it appropriately.